What's up, Cascade Media Group? I am your host, Glenn Brian Frizzell. We are filming in the 18th and Vine Jazz District here in Kansas City, Missouri. Today, my special guest is Mr. Rodney Thompson of Vine Street Films. There is a documentary that will be showing at Nelson Atkins Museum next Thursday, which is February the 9th, starting at 6 o'clock in the Atkins Auditorium. The title of that documentary is why we're here today. It's called a step above the plaza celebrating Westport's African-American community. Mr. Thompson, can you tell us a little bit about this documentary and why it's important to us? Thank you, Glenn. Thank you for having me. Um, a step above the plaza, I think that the uh, actually St. Luke's Hospital uh, deserves a tremendous amount of credit for this particular project. Um, it started out primarily as an oral history project, and they commissioned me to uh, be a part of the team, and that's basically I'm part of the team. And that, that also included um, Joe Maddox, who did the uh, 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 interviews, and uh, St. Luke's was very engaged in the project in terms of relating to the interacting with the families and uh, just making the whole thing happen. Now why, why the title, I understand, Plaza, and then you have Step Above, uh, I think and it African was, Americans? How do all three of those mix? It, it was uh, kind of a play on the fact that um, the, the neighborhood is actually just a few blocks uh, north of the plaza and it's up above the plaza. So few um, blocks and up above. Yeah, a few blocks north and and there's a, a, a hill, so it's above the plaza. That name came from um, from St. Luke's. I didn't have anything to do with naming the project. It's not a project that I initiated, but I became very engaged in the project because uh, I'm just so interested in history and I really was not aware of, even though I've lived in Kansas City all of my life, or most of my life, I was not aware of this um, this neighborhood, this little enclave that was that was all black, and it actually people had, black people had lived in that area since the 1850s. Wow! Since wow. the 1850s, before the antebellum period, before the Civil War. Yeah, before the Civil War, even before the Civil War, and uh, um, after the Civil War, it was some of the people, uh, one family in particular, could trace their heritage to 1870 mm -hmm. um, in in the area. So it was, it was just an, uh, you know, I was immediately drawn into it. Now, you made this documentary several years ago. We all are interested in history here. Are any of the people who appear in the documentary still around, Mr. Thompson? I'm sure that, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are, and we're hoping that some of them will attend, actually attend the uh, uh, event this Thursday. Let's say it again, a step above the plaza celebrating Westport's African-American community Thursday, February the 9th, that's this Thursday, starting at 6 o'clock, the Nelson Atkins Museum in the Atkins Auditorium. Can you tell us what you found out? Uh, I mean, you're researching all this rich history. Is there anything that stands out that our viewers will see? Well, um, like I said, it started out strictly as oral history, and then I was just struck by the passion that uh, all these people had for for this neighborhood, and I'm a visual person, and I kept seeing, you know, seeing it visually. So we asked, uh, and one family actually had quite a few photographs, quite a few historical photographs. His, uh, a relative of his had taught at Penn School in the 1870s. Now what is Penn School? Is that Penn before Westport High School? Penn School is the school in that community, and it was primarily uh, an elementary school, but it was the first school for African Americans, let me get this right, west of the Mississippi, and it was started during the uh, 1870s. Now, I, I don't know too much about Westport history, but somewhere along the lines I read that 
correct me if I'm wrong, that it has a strong Quaker connection. Were there Quakers around? What, what did the, the uh, Westport community look like at this time? Well, I'm, I'm sure that the Westport community was uh, primarily white. I don't know about the Quaker, uh, Quaker connection, so I can't really um, comment on that. But it was a, it was a small enclave, and, and uh, it was primarily black. And like I said, these people were extremely passionate about their community. So what happened was we had a few visuals, and then I just kept looking around, and uh, we actually found out that in 1941, Kansas City, Missouri tried to photograph all of the facades. Uh, the buildings were still around. All the buildings. No, they tried to photograph all of the buildings in Kansas City. It was a tax assessment. Hmm. And they would stand out in front of them with this wide the placard. Uh, and and uh, But all the buildings in Kansas City, you know, including uh, the building that we're in now, if it was in existence. And so uh, this was like a, a treasure trove, because you could actually see what the neighborhood looked like, see these, see these homes, and it was, um, it, it was quite interesting. So that gave me something to, to add to the uh, rural part of it. Now, you mentioned St. Luke's involvement with this. Why are you excited about Thursday's event? Can you tell us? Why am I excited? About um, participating. Well, you know, it's an opportunity for people to, to, uh, to see my work and, and see how much I, I care about history. And um, uh, the Nelson has been a, a supporter. I can't say enough good things about them because they have been a, a supporter of my work. And uh, um, I just appreciate it a great deal. And, and I, think, I think it's important for us to know about our history. It's very important for us to know about our history. And I think it's important for any group to um, document their own history. Because if you don't, then you're, you're actually not getting uh, a true perspective. You're getting somebody else's perspective on your history. And quite often it's not the way that you remember it. Carter G. Woodson, Dr. Woodson has a lot of excellent quotes about what you're just now saying, what you're talking about. Uh, now, can you give us a couple of dates? Um, you mentioned 1850. Can you, what time period does the uh, Steptoe neighborhood, and what happened to it? Um, you don't want to give away too much of the... the it lasted up into, up into the 1960s. And 1850 to 1960? up into the 60s before, and uh, actually, uh, and it was there before St. Luke's Hospital, which I think was first built in 1925, and of course, St. Luke's Hospital had expansion plans, and a part of the reason that uh, um, the community uh, no longer exists is because they acquired a lot of the property. Now, I, I don't want to shift gears too heavily, but I am a lover of documentaries. I know uh, James Baldwin, they have a, a new topic, uh, what is it called? I Am Not Your Negro by Raul Peck, uh, the 13th documentary that Ava, Miss Ava has done. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey as an independent filmmaker with the Vine Films? Um, my journey, well it's been uh, it's been quite a journey. I think that is a good way of... Vine Street Film, excuse me. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good way of, of putting it. Um, I went to school to study film. I went to San Francisco State University. And uh, I have a master's in film from there. And then I returned to Kansas City, which is not a bastion of, of, of filmmaking. But uh, I'll still determine to uh, uh, continue with that work. This is what I was meant to do. And uh, uh, I've been doing it for a number of years. I worked in video production, producing corporate videos for a number of years, and then for the past 10 years or so, 
have been just primarily making documentary films, documenting primarily uh, African American history in Kansas City, Missouri. And this being Black History Time Period, can you tell us who were some of your role models? Who are some uh, documentary filmmakers that you looked to for inspiration when you were going through film school and starting fine street films? Well, unfortunately, uh, there weren't a lot of well-known documentary filmmakers who looked like us at that particular time. Uh, one particular filmmaker I do remember was, his name was Bill Greaves, and he lived in, in New York, and I had an opportunity. He was before Tony Brown Journal, correct? Yeah, he was before. Public broadcast. He was before Tony, he was before Tony Brown's Journal, because that, I, I believe that started in the, in the 70s, and he, he, he began making films. Um, maybe in the late 50s in Canada. In Canada, uh, he had to go there to get the, get the opportunity to learn the craft. And, um, uh, but during the time that I was a graduate student, I had the opportunity to go to New York uh, on an internship. And while I was there, the people that I was working for made it possible for me to work, work with Mr. Greaves um, on a project, so and that was that was quite an quite an experience uh, for me because I looked up to him and, and knew that there were not a lot of people like us uh, in the field. And um, but since that time, you know, I've made a few films and and I'm excited about this particular project. It, like I said, it didn't start out as a documentary film and. I tried to do what I could to add visuals to it, to make it more visual, to add to the uh, oral commentary. But I think that the, what carries the film is the people's passion for their community. Mm -hmm. And let's tell them a little bit about uh, the film again. Uh, steer the conversation back to Thursday, February the 9th. It's called a Step Above the Plaza, celebrating Westport's African American community. The event is held at Nelson Atkins Museum in the Atkins Auditorium, starting at six o'clock. Uh, there will uh, be an opening by Dr. Delia Gillis, who's also been on this show before, a professor at uh, Central Missouri State. Is that how you say it now? Uh, she will give the opening. Uh, you also will participate in uh, the particular program. Now, if I have a question, what should I ask you? I want to come and I want to uh, sound intelligent. What's, what's something that I, I should research before I come to this event? Okay, let me go back. I think uh, Delia is a professor at the University of Central Missouri. Okay. I think that's, uh, okay. Is that what I said? Um, no, we, you said something close to that. used to be CMSU. Yeah, yeah, you said something close to that. But it's the University of Central Missouri now. And uh, uh, she's a good friend and outstanding uh, historian. Yes, yes. Um, I don't know if there's any particular, anything in particular that you should ask me. I think you should pay attention to the, uh, um, to the residents and the uh, passion that they exude for this particular community and how that, and, and reflect on how that sense of community no longer exists for us. Um, anywhere? No, any, anywhere. I mean, our communities now are social media communities. You know, they're not physical communities, but more, more having to do with, with uh, social media. But that's my take on it, to just, you know, just the, I was just struck by how passionate these people were about their community. Well, Mr. Thompson, anything else? Share with us before we no, hit pause. I, Not goodbye, but hit pause. I just hope that uh, um, people come out and and uh, see the film and some support the uh, uh, projects that the Nelson uh, comes up with. And uh, you know, that's uh, pretty much it for me. Cascade Media Group family, this is Glenn Brian Frizzell. Again, come on out to the Nelson Atkins Museum 
this Thursday, February the 9th, starting at 6 o'clock in the Atkins Auditorium. The project is a step above the plaza celebrating Westport's African American community. From what I understand, it was a very vibrant community. We'd like to thank our special guest, Mr. Thompson, one of 18th and Vine Street's own. Remember, the sky's the limit. Shoot high, aim for the moon. If you miss at the very least, you would have landed among the stars. Take care until next time. I'm IFBB Bikini Pro Cat Williams, and when I'm not working out in the gym, I'm searching the web on Cascade Media and What's Up Kansas City. So make sure you check them out.